Classical India has been considered one of the most influential civilizations of the ancient world, contributing to advances in trade, art, mathematics, and religion. Often overlooked by its neighbors like China and the Mongols, classical India was a very influential component to the Silk Road, offering materialistic goods such as pearls, coral, and ivory, but ultimately creating cross-cultural connections for the whole ancient world to benefit from. Now, let's head over to MJ and take a look at the inner workings of the civilization to get a better, a better understanding of just how important it was. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Scully, and today I'm going to be talking about the geography of classical India. Classical India is located in the northwestern region of the, sub of the subcontinent. The two main rivers, the Ganges and Indus are rivers, are beneficial to the people because the land is good for farming. The Himalaya Mountains also are located in, northern, in the northern part of India. The climate of India is mostly dry and really sunny, except for the monsoon seasons. The monsoon season makes it extremely difficult for India to trade because of the extreme rain conditions. But during the monsoon season, heavy rain comes to India, and all the crops and plants are able to grow and flourish. Now let's talk about politics. Classical India has many kingdoms that have developed throughout the land. India has local governments that local rulers lead. During the Mauryan dynasty, they were able to maintain power through the military. The Guptas chose their leaders by negotiation, and their rulers were appointed by the gods. People start to think that the political system doesn't matter anymore just because of the caste system. Although the caste system also does provide public order to India. One important ruler of classical India has been Ashoka Maurya. He developed the capital and wrote, wrote out laws for the civilization. India is a thriving economy filled with agriculture, manufacturing, and trade. Over the past 1,000 years, Indian herders have shifted to agriculture. This shift allowed for the growth of towns and cities, but there was a surplus of food to support them. Now, we see thriving cities trading along the Ganges River, the East Ganges Delta, and the East Indian coast. These cities primarily fa manufacture goods to be used locally, but some businesses trade their products overseas. We've just seen a huge surge in trade with Asia, and the road building project in Persia will hopefully foster more. One religion has been developing extremely quickly, and that is Buddhism. During this age of immense religious creativity and exploration, Buddhism has been founded by Gautama Siddhartha, the Buddha. He came to believe that extreme self-discipline was not a good basis for his spiritual life. However, Buddhists believe that the release from desires is a way to salvation. In daily life, Buddhists emphasize the importance of ethical behavior and learning to take the middle path. In the classical period, three distinct religions have begun to emerge, Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. These three religions are responsible for creating much of the culture of India and the way India's people view things. The interaction between three rival but closely related faiths produce a rich and open-minded dialogue between them. Due to immense trade, Indian religions are able to be spread very successfully, therefore creating an open-minded religious society throughout this time. Hi, this is Kenley Tice reporting live from Classical India. To start, the dominant social system in India at this time period is a system called caste. It is a system illustrated by this hierarchy that includes the Brahmins, Kshatras, Vaishyas, Sudras, and the Untouchables. With this system, the people of India are able to live in harmony because they're separated by their caste, but they live in nearby communities. In these communities, people knew what their jobs were, and they did them because it was their dharma. Although you can't move between castes completely, it is possible to move between more than 300 jatis in your caste. Jati is a system of subcastes that is usually based on occupation, and they allow for more freedom in the rigid caste system. Some still felt as though this wasn't enough. So many people turned to religion, as you might have just heard from Izzy. These are religions such as Buddhism and Jainism that disregarded the caste system completely. Along with this, other problems have been created with the caste system, such as the generals. The males in the family are the dominant figures, and they make all the decisions, including who their young children will marry. As you can see in this picture, the role, the role of women in the classical India caste system is most likely to cook and clean, giving women almost no voice in society. The caste system is changing each day, and we will be back to tell you next week all about it. Thank you. India's scientific achievements are far above most societies at this time. Already, India's scholars are, have made major breakthroughs in the fields of mathematics, astronomy, physics, chemistry, medicine, production, architecture, shipbuilding, and much more. Many of India's people are able to read and write Sanskrit, the language of most religious texts. India's scholars formalized Arabic numerals and used them to multiply, divide, and accurately calculate pi in the solar year. 
Astronomers have discovered that the round Earth rotated on an axis, and our chemists and philosophers have made progress toward discovering atoms. India during the classical age is thriving artistically, allowing many cultures to express their artistic views. The Ajainta Caves, which are considered one of the greatest and most powerful works of art, were created in this era. There are 48 caves that make up the Ajainta, most of which were carved out of solid rock and filled with Buddhist sculptures. Not only are many artists focusing on sculpting, they are also turning most of their attention to painting. Murals decorate walls, churches, guest rooms, and wealthy houses everywhere. With time, Indian classical paintings will blend into the various traditions influencing them. We are now noticing that art is a way to express life, passion, and curiosity. Most pieces contain depictions of gods and legends which have been transformed into familiar and contemporary images. Alongside the art forms like architecture, painting, and sculpting, there have been evolving, changing, and transforming art traditions in India. These art forms are expressions of people belonging to different cultural and social groups of India due to the vast amount of new culture that has been brought into India with the help of the Silk Road. That's all for now. Thanks for watching Inside Classical India, and don't forget to check back in next week for more inside information about everything geography, political, economic, religious, social, intellectual, and art. Thanks for watching, and stay classy, Classical India.